we're on the Turkish coast for the 2021 European Archery Championships. Coming up from Antalya on Compound Saturday, Denmark's Tanya Gelentin is hoping to follow up World Cup success with European gold. And one rising star will become continental champion. Will it be Matthias Fullerton of Denmark or Jakob Yildiz from Turkey? The beautiful Turkish coastal resort of Antalya is no stranger to international archery tournaments and this week it's hosting the European Championships. 279 archers from 40 countries are taking part and they're all hoping to be crowned a European champion. In the women's final, Denmark's Tanya Gelentin was hoping to follow up her gold medal success at stage two of the Hyundai Archery World Cup by taking the European title. To do that, she'd have to overcome Britain's Ella Gibson in what was her first international title match. Tanya Galantine of Denmark on target number one will shoot first and she's the world number three, just 25 years old. Ella Gibson on target number two is 20 years old and the world number 27. Yeah. 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 Gibson, that rising youngster in the British ranks, drops into a seven to get things off. Not really what she was looking for in terms of a start against the Hi. burgeoning time of Tanya Gelantine. Yeah. More like it from Ella. That's going to settle her down. She's back in the middle. Excellent. So the start we've come to expect from Tanya Gelantin. Winning in Lausanne at the Hyundai Archery World Cup. Excellent. Another 10 from Ella Gibson. Mitigating the damage of the seven that she scored as a sighter. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong. You're involved in the British setup. I haven't seen this British coach before. I, I, I'm sure. I'm sure he's um, he's a new he's a new guy to the British team, isn't he? <laughs> you find that's Mr. Slosher himself, Mr. Perfect. Oh, he's changed allegiances. He's, <laughs> he's not shooting for Great Britain now, is he? <laughs> well, the coach in the box has to have the same uniform on as the archer, so he's donned the GBR shirt uh, to stand behind Ella in this match. Um, he doesn't coach Ella. Um, he has helped her before and gave us some advice uh, before she set an indoor world record. The British team have travelled light to this competition for obvious reasons and so Mikey Schlosser kindly has stepped into the box. Ten. Ten. Well, good arrow from both of them to start this second end. Just a little bit of movement there. Yeah, I think most of her arrows going right. Look at the wind now on the flags on the target, pushing to the right. Hello, gone right. right as well. Back into the tens for Galantine, though, and uh, now that two point lead moves on to three. Well, Ella Gibson's got a fight on her hands here. After two, she is down by three points. Into the tens, though, she's got something about her, Ella Gibson, that suggests that uh, she might be climbing the ladder as well here. European silver guaranteed for the British archer. 
but up against the inform archer at the moment. Nine. Not far away, just both slightly high, just need to adjust their sight, get them back down into the ten. Fancy the wind is playing its part again. And again it's not very blustery, the adjustment there. Just a little bit over the top, but another 28 to finish on an 83 after three for Gibson. Not bad shooting. Ten. And then you're up against the 29 from Galantine. And that gap just keeps growing. It's now four points. Yeah, she's got this lovely little patch, isn't she? Just on the right of the X ring line. And everything's really to the right for her. I wish she'd move her sight over a little bit and really centralise that group because you never know with these line cutters, it really could make a difference. She listened to you, Nikki. She's moved that one over to the left for the first time. It's good to see. Yep. I love this from Mikey. Yep. We see that all the time, don't we? We hear that in their in their team and Ella's getting that as well. That's positive reinforcement behind her. Yep, that's a ten. I think it's as Gibson improves her performance on for a perfect here. Just dropping into the nines for a 29, a best three arrows on 112, just as she's climbing. Look at what Galantine does, and the grouping there is just phenomenal. Her first perfect, and again, moves on by another point, just eking out this victory. I mean, she's got to be careful, hasn't she? Uh, I was near called a Jensen, uh, Tanya Galantine. She's got to be really careful here in that she can't lose that focus. She can't lose that concentration. And perhaps that win in Lausanne has given her that additional bit of experience that you need. Yeah, you've really got to stay in the present. What can happen at this point is your brain starts to tell you, oh, oh, you can win this. Oh, you know, we're ahead here. Oh, I've, I've won it. Oh, yeah, I've won it before. We've, you know, but she's just got to stick to the present. Each and every arrow that you shoot, just keep your mind on that. Have your mental routine that you go through. Stick with that, those thoughts every single time. Don't let it get ahead and it can and that's that's normal those thoughts might come in but replace them with what you want it to be it will be gibson to get the final end underway Just spectacular from both archers here. Gibson back on for her first. Perfect. Would be a great finish to this final for her. Nine. Just pushing it out to the left for another 29. So 141. The European champion in waiting is the European champion finishing off with back-to-back -back perfect another 30 and Tanya Galantine is the 2021 European champion I wanted it really badly <laughs> I guess it's just I I worked a lot on my shot and what to do in matches like this and I'm really happy that I can actually do it when it comes down to it Let's take a look at the final rankings for that women's competition. Tanya Galantine proving that her form is here to stay. Denmark takes the European title from Ella Gibson. Sandra Latt beating Sarah Priels. The Dutch archer taking bronze. In the compound women's team gold medal match, the Netherlands were taking on France. And in windy conditions, it was a tough start for the Dutch. So it was no surprise to see France take the first end. 
if you look at this course, the first and the last arrows are the best, showing the class of Sophie Dodemont. Sophie Dodemont, Lola Grandjean and Tiffany Renaudin extended their lead throughout the match and claimed gold in the fourth. Our finishes with a beauty as well. Absolutely great stuff from this strong French team. A 2.24 to 16 is France, the European champions here in Antalya. In the compound men's team final, France had the chance to make it a gold medal double, but they were up against hosts and second seeds, Turkey. And in the second end, the Turkish team really hit their stride. Brilliant. A 60 from them, perfect score for Turkey. As hard as they tried, France couldn't quite keep up. Home favourites Evren Kyron, Furkan Uruk and Jakub Yildiz continued their dominance in the fourth end to take the gold in style. It is teenage sensation Jakub Yildiz. And he's popped it into uh, the ten ring as well. In the mixed team final, Belgium were taking on Estonia and there was nothing to separate these pairs over four ends. A ten to draw level. Oh, she does get the 10. The match will be settled by a shoot-off. An 8, a clear 8, will give the European title to Belgium. Sarah Priels, what have you got on offer for us? Very quick and straight into the X. A clear win for Belgium. They are the 2021 European champions. Still to come, two teenagers go head-to-head -head for men's compound gold at the European Championships. Archery is a sport of balance between athlete and equipment. Under pressure, maintaining that balance is easier said than done. Compound right now is so precise that Balance is actually one of the most important things. It affects the side picture that we see in front of us and that helps you execute a nice shot and just be consistent. Balancing the bow with more weight, it makes the bow, the movements of the bow less radical. When the bow is very heavy and you're aiming in the middle, you're gonna have the experience of just drifting slightly, especially if it's windy like it was now, you would drift slightly into the nine by, that, by the time you would come back into the 10, the shot would sometimes break. Most of us tend to have very heavy bows and just work on our form so it doesn't move us out of the middle as much because when it moves out of the middle in the finals, it's usually a problem. So there's a few very important things. So it's the lean back or no lean, the holding weight, the pressure on the grip, that influences how, much, how many weights you're gonna have on the stabilizers. So on my bow, I have uh, 17 ounces on the front, uh, 21 on the back and eight on the bow, which is approximately one and a half kilos. It doesn't sound like very much, but uh, the weights are on the end of the bars uh, that act like levers. So as soon as you put the weight so far out of your pressure, it feels like a lot. I'm trying to achieve that when I put some pressure on the bow, especially when I'm nervous or tired, that the bow doesn't move too much. It's usually, I learned that from Jesse Broadwater, uh, you don't want to balance the bow when you're feeling the best, when you're in full power and in perfect conditions at home. You want to do it at the beginning of practice, end of practice, when you're tired, uh, or in like local tournaments. Although I play with my weights at international tournaments as well, because you just come here and it's a bit different conditions, a uh, bit different nerves as well. To be honest, I feel like most archers, especially the ones that are winning here, very rarely finish the tournament with the same bow that they started with. By my opinion, if you're fighting the bow and you're fighting the weight of the bow in particular, um, it's time to take off some weight. For me, when I start making silly mistakes that I actually don't feel, I go back to the basics, take off pretty much all the weights off of the, off of the bow. I have like two ounces in the front, three in the back which then starts showing all my mistakes because the weights do tend to swallow a ton of mistakes.
I think that attention to detail in compound archery right now is very important because the results are extremely high. So pay attention to these minor details to some, but very big detail to some other people, because I think that right now in compound, every point matters. In the men's compound gold medal match at the European Championships in Antalya, a pair of rising stars were going head to head. 18-year-old Matthias Fullerton of Denmark was up against another 18-year-old, Jakob Yildiz from Turkey. It's time to find out who is going to be this year's European champion for compound men. And it is a surprising lineup. World number 73, Jakob Yildiz. He's 18 years old. He's from the host nation, Turkey. He will be shooting first and he's going to have the crowd right behind him. But he's up against someone who's just one rank higher in the world rankings. World number 72, Matthias Fullerton of Denmark, who is also 18. This is a glimpse into the future of compound men's archery. Wind affected, I think that arrow from the Dane. I would think so. Long hold as well. Perhaps a little bit of unbalance on the release. Well, making a minor adjustment there, but I think you have to say that the wind has already become a factor here in this. Uh, Gold medal match, European title at stake. Positioning and uh, grouping of those arrows, very good. Just a bit right of where they need to be. Another big movement though before the shot went off, so I think it's a bit of an error on his in, on his part really. We'll just settle into the match and uh, bring those in. Well, 27 is going to be enough to take it, but uh, can Fullerton mitigate damage he can with a 10 back into the middle for him and the Dane just trails by a single point here yeah, well I think now that they've got through this first end they are settled there's a great deal of joy um, competing on home soil of course but with it comes some pressure on the other side of the shooting line the Dane uh, perhaps might be his agent a little bit. Well, where's my support? Oh, the long hold at the start, then oh, he's pulled away and got away. Matthias Fullerton with a 10 now, but I'm not quite sure how. Hey. Just a little bit more composure in that one. Yeah, he, look, he looks just really solid, doesn't he? Whereas Mateus here, we can just see a little bit more nerves, a little bit more movement, um, just not quite settled yet. Hey. Hey. Great, perfect there in the end. He's managed to battle to that, certainly with the first arrow. Arrows two and three were solid, but this has been masterclass, really. Even though the same score, you have to say the composure that Jakob Yildiz shot that perfect 30 is incredible. And that the Turkish conveyor belt producing all these brilliant archers seems to still be working. Now, the conversation going on here between uh, coach and judge, what do you think this can possibly be about? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. Um, it's obviously some discussion about something, but there's nothing obvious that we saw um, that was a problem there. It is Jakob Yildiz who's leading after two 
ends and Matthias Fullerton will get us underway. Really building up a nice group just in the left of the 10 there. Long to hold, being counted down but solid. He wasn't happy with that. Again, perhaps a longer hole, just lost the balance on it. We were so zoomed in, couldn't quite see. But um, out into the eight. Nine. Struggling to get these arrows off into the nine with that one. In three points and really a chance for Jakob to extend his lead. Nine. Pushes it up into the nine, has extended that lead but only by two points uh, when there was an opportunity to push and it by three. Uh, but the pace of the match has, it has settled now. They've got just a little bit more into their rhythm. Yeah, I think Mateus, though, he's still um, really struggling to make those shots go. And we've just seen him up there a little bit longer, um, shaking a little bit. So he just needs to really commit to them, really have confidence that that shot is going to go off. It's going to be OK. Stick with it. Um, but he's just struggling a little bit with his shooting back tension release aid. To, to shoot first. Extending his lead by another point. So the pair of them now showing what they can do. Fulton just perhaps took a little bit longer to settle into this than Yeldis. That's why we're seeing potentially a three-point lead. Another perfect from him. Slightly different from the one in the second end, but it has pushed him into a three-point lead. And tremendous performance from, in particular, Jakob Yildiz. Now, I have had uh, a little nudge that uh, the conversation between the Danish coach and the judge it was actually a challenge about whether Yildiz was drawing too early. That is Fullerton training will shoot first in this fifth end. Three point gap is difficult to claw back in a single end. But Fullerton has a job to do, and that's to put it into the tens and put his opponent under a bit more pressure. Oh, there's one of them back. Great grouping. He's found his groove now. He's really, you know, got his confidence to make that release go off when he wants it to on that back tension. Still holding on to that two point lead, though, the Turkish archer. Perfect on. He's got a 29. So finishes with a 141 and eight is what's required for the European title. 
Oh, oh, the worst of the lot from him in his 15 arrows, but he did get the eight he required. And Jakub Yildiz, at the age of 18, has become the European champion in his home country here in Antalya. What a brilliant performance, Jakub, the champion. This is a very honorable feeling for me, actually. I'm a very yarışma kazandım. Yani çok güzel oldu bu genç yaşta bu dereceyi elde etmem. O yüzden şu an çok mutluyum yani. Çok düzgün de cümle kuramıyorum. <gülüyor> Here are the rankings for uh, the, the final standings effect for the European Championships. Jakub Yildiz from Matthias Fullerton of Denmark and Wukash Pavilski beating Krippendorf of Germany in the bronze medal match. What a week we've enjoyed in Antalya on the Turkish coast. 18-year-old Jakob Yildiz from Turkey and Tanya Gelantin of Denmark have been crowned the new European champions. Join us next time when our attention turns to stage three of the Hyundai Archery World Cup, which comes from Paris, France.